Hi everyone, it's Santiago from Kinova and welcome to this tutorial. In this video we will follow along the first C++ MoveIt project. Um, just to recap on one, what we did in our previous video, we went along with the quick start in Arvis tutorial, so we were able to explore the motion planning plugin of Arvis, so we were able to set some start poses, some goal poses, plan between them, uh, we were also able to introspect all of the waypoints in between. Uh, we also saw how collisions are displayed and what happens if we try to read to uh, drag a start pose or a goal pose outside of the robot's reach. And finally, we uh, saved our Arvis config for later use. So now we're ready to start. Let's go ahead and click on this uh, tutorial link and we will follow along with the steps. So the first step over here is to create a ROS2 package. So as you have seen in the previous video, all of the dependencies we use are contained inside their own ROS2 package and we will do the same for this new project. So we will create our own custom project with all of our code inside of it. So let's copy the command. Let's open a terminal. I will navigate to my uh, tutorials workspace. So I had placed it in tutorials, workspace move it in the source directory. Let's copy our command here and I'll explain what it does. So this first part, the ROS2 package create part, this is the command that will uh, make ROS2 generate all of the necessary files and folders uh, for a basic ROS2 project. Uh, sorry, for a basic Rust2 package. Uh, and then we just need to specify some of the arguments uh, we want to uh, customize our package. So the first one here is the build type. So basically we're telling Rust2 here to generate a C++ project with the MNC make argument. If it was uh, a Python project, it would be a different uh, argument here. Now for the dependencies, uh, again Rust2 will handle all of the placing the dependencies at the right files uh, at the right places, so we just need to tell him which uh, dependencies we want. Uh, so in our case we want RCLCPP. This is the basic client library API for Rust2. And then this move it Rust planning interface, which is the interface that will allow us to communicate with our actual uh, arm and also the simulated arm through move it so uh, now the node name so this is the name we want to give to our rust to node uh, that will run our code uh, we will just use the provided name here hello move it and our last argument is the actual package name which is the same as the node name so let's run the command and this will be the uh, standard output that you see, so it's just stating everything that was created. Um, Alright, let's come back here and follow the next steps. So now, let's open the project uh, inside of VS Code, so I'll just cd into our new project. Open up VS Code. And we can see here everything that was generated by Ross. So this is our source file uh, with an empty C++ script for the for right now. We have our CMake list file, our package.xml, and an include folder that will not be used for now. Uh, so let's come back to the tutorial and we will copy this code. I'll explain in a bit what it does. Then we will open uh, our source file, so hello move it.cpp. We can erase this and let's paste and save. So basically, what we're doing here is some very basic uh, Rust code to uh, create a node. So, what we're doing inside our main function over here is we're actually initializing RCLCPP, so the like I mentioned, the client library for the Rust API. And then using a uh, shared pointer, we're just uh, instantiating an RCLCPP node uh, object, which is the uh, class for a Rust node. So we just need to give it uh, the node name and these default parameters over here. 
then we create a logger so if we ever want to log some messages to our console uh, we will use the logger object here so we'll, we'll just create it for now uh, and then just uh, for the case of this example we shut down the node and the code ends so now that we have pasted this code we can actually build it if we go back to, a, to our terminal let's uh, go up two levels to our workspace let's paste our command here and since we're just want, wanting to build our new package uh, we'll specify with this packages select argument that we want to build only the hello move it package here so let's build that Alright, let's source our newly built workspace by running the command. And now we can we will be able to run our Rust node. For now we won't see anything like I mentioned. Uh, if we check our code we're just uh, instantiating a node and then we're uh, automatically shutting down. So we will just see basically uh, our terminal return and no uh, logs so like we see there's nothing special here so uh, let's follow along this is what I already explained so here we're just in, in uh, instantiating a node uh, creating a logger and then shutting down our node for for the moment now we can do the fun part so let's start uh, by copying this code I'll explain in a bit what it means so let's just copy it for now and we will put it inside here uh, under the this comment over here so uh, at line 19 we can go ahead and paste the code let me just indent this let's save our changes and we can uh, just run this uh, build command again uh, don't worry I'll just explain this in a bit let's just run the build command again with our package select argument hello move it and I will see, see you once the build is done now once our project is built uh, we can go ahead and run the same launch file that we did in our previous tutorial so it will launch our viz with the uh, motion plan plugin uh, let's open up a new tab of a terminal here source our setup file and we will run the same launch file So we have Arvis over here, and then in another terminal, we will run our new code. Uh, actually, in our first terminal, we will run our new code. And wh what we should see is our arm moving. So this uh, code snippet is actually sending uh, commands to our arm like we did uh, visually in our previous tutorial using our viz but right now uh, we're doing all this by code so we can see the arm is actually reaching a position and it's now done so we moved we effectively moved our arm from a candle position into um, our random position so one thing to note here um, 
just to, to clarify things, we we still need to run uh, the launch file uh, that we used in the previous tutorial, so our demo uh, dot launch dot by file, because this uh, launch file will uh, actually execute and launch all of the uh, move it stuff. Uh, it'll publish the robot description so that Arvis can display it. It'll publish the robots. Uh, joint states and all of that stuff so uh, the code we just built it's basically just a C++ uh, script that sends a position to the arm but if we want to visualize it and all of that uh, stuff we still need uh, the launch file so that's why we need two terminals over here and that's what they mention they mention uh, in the tutorial if you just run the hello move it uh, uh, code uh, it'll wait it will it'll actually wait because uh, it needs to find the robot description it needs to communicate uh, the the new commands and 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 all of that so uh, if you just run our new project it'll just time out after 10 seconds and give you an error that it couldn't find the robot description um, so we can now come over here and examine our code uh, first thing uh, to note here, it's the we're using the move group interface object to communicate with our arm. Uh, so this uh, object, this is a class that we need to use. And basically, uh, we like I mentioned it in the previous tutorial. So our arms are se uh, separated into two planning groups. So we have the manipulator, which includes all of the joints that move the arm, or there's also the gripper. Uh, planning group which includes all of the joints uh, and the links of the uh, actual gripper that we're using but since we want to move our arm then we need to specify uh, over here we want to, to plan for the manipulated uh, planning group if you would want eventually to move the gripper then you would need to create another object here and uh, specify the gripper uh, move group and then basically we're just uh, generating a random, well not a random, but a predefined uh, target pose. Uh, what they mention in the tutorials page, it's here it is done with a lambda function, which is a more modern way and declarative way of uh, setting our, 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 um, our variable. Uh, it's not mandatory, you could use it, you could still do it the classic way. So you could just uh, put all of this out of this lambda function and it'll still work. Uh, it's just the style used. And then once we define our target pose, uh, we just set it to the move group interface using this set pose target. Uh, we pass it our target pose. And uh, in the same uh, lambda function way over here, we uh, generate a, a actual plan and a success. So this variable success will hold uh, the result of the plan. So if uh, a plan was generated generated correctly, it'll be uh, equal to true, but if not, it will be equal to false. And this plan over here, it's the actual plan that uh, the move group interface object will know how to use. So basically here we create our Lambda function. Uh, we need to uh, instantiate a message that we feed to the plan function. And this message variable will, will be filled um, with our actual plan. And that's what we return over here. We actually return a pair, so a tuple in Python, it's the same thing, uh, with uh, the success and the actual plan if it succeeded. And right now over here, the last step, if the plan succeeded, we execute it or if not, we just print an error for now. So that's what we saw um, previously when we ran uh, this script. Um, so that's about it for this tutorial. It's pretty short. Uh, right now we will go ahead and do it on a real arm. So we just did it on a simulated arm uh, just uh, using Arvis. So we will now go ahead and do some small changes and see it on a real arm. 
So we're going to need to change uh, basically some arguments inside our demo launch file so that we can interact with our real arm. So I have our workspace open up here in uh, VS Code. So let's go ahead and open our launch file under move it to tutorials, doc, tutorials, quick start in rviz, launch, and here it is our demo launch file so basically this is what we need to modify here so we need to change a couple of things so that we're able to communicate with our real hardware instead of a simulated uh, robot so uh, the first one over here is the robot IP uh, all of our arms by default are shipped uh, with this default address that I will type in but if you have configured it otherwise um, you need to uh, put your custom IP here so by default this 192.168.1.10 address is valid. Uh, so right now we're using real hardware, so this we will set to false. Uh, the gripper, I'm using a robotic 2F85 gripper, so that's why uh, we are going to leave it here. Uh, we will also need to specify the gripper joint name, so this is uh, for Ross control to actually be able uh, to control the grippers joint so we need to specify uh, what what's the name of that joint um, let me just validate uh, what's the syntax of this so we can go here on the rust 2 cortex inside bring up launch gently launch everything is here so the gripper joint name is gonna be this uh, so let's joint name let's set it to that value here and we will also need to specify this argument which will allow uh, basically the communication to the gripper through uh, the arm so from the base to the top of our end effector link uh, so it's not very uh, it's it's not going to be used in this tutorial but uh, if you want to experiment and add some gripper com commands you are going to need to define this argument so let's go ahead and put it uh, here so that you won't have any issues and that's about it so uh, this way we will be able to communicate with our real hardware and Hopefully when we run our commands, it's our real arm that will move. So let's open up our two terminals from before. I will just place everything here so that we can see. Uh, so let's start by building this uh, tutorials package so that it uh, takes into account our changes. So this is the command, calc on build, mix and debug, packages select, move it to tutorials. All right, let's source our build. Uh, let's go into our second tab and source our new build as well. Okay, so now we should be uh, good to go. I will activate a camera that I have so that we can see our real arm. Then in this first uh, terminal, we will launch our demo launch file. So let's go ahead and launch this. So you should see uh, Arviz showing your robot model. So if your arm moves, it should move here in Arviz as well. So let me move this a bit. And now we can run our actual script that we did. So our hello move it script and hopefully when I run this uh, you will see everything move so we will see the real robot move and also uh, the virtual model over here. So let's give that a try. And we can see that everything is working well.
Alright, so that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you for following around. And don't hesitate, you can modify our script, you can send it to different positions, you can also try and open and close the grippers. So there, there's a lot of things you can do uh, from this code over here. So uh, don't hesitate to try things out. And thank you for following this tutorial. And see you on the next one. Bye-bye.